It's called <laughs> Unshakable, Your Financial Freedom Playbook, Creating Peace of Mind in a World of Volatility. Tony Robbins, welcome back to Good Day New York. Good to see you guys again. See you, Thanks, First of all, I want to wish you a happy birthday, although oh. I don't know what day to wish you a happy birthday. When is your birthday? Well, February 29th, so it's sometime between midnight and 1201 tomorrow, I guess, <laughs> something like that. So, no, when I'm 84, I'll be 21. It's a good deal. I'm 14 right now. I love that. That is awesome. 14 well, birthdays. Happy somewhat birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, I started reading the book, yes. and it's amazing because I think a lot of us worry. You yes. know, we have our money in the market. Yeah. What happens, you know, like right now, I mean, the market's doing really well well yes do we take our money out now and just say okay that's it we did we did okay yeah. what do we do Tony that's why I wrote this book I wrote this book because I wanted to protect people because there, a crash is coming now whether it's six months from now 12 months 36 months no one knows uh, you know Warren Buffett said if you listen to market forecasters their only purpose is to make you know people that tell fortunes look good because you know, they just don't know what's going on so but what I did find to prove in this book is what the facts are so here's a couple things you should know number one there's a new high on average every month most people have no clue. So you hear, oh, it broke records, it broke records. We're in a situation right now that's very artificial. It's a situation where the feds around the world have been printing money. So nobody knows what's going to happen. There's this tremendous fear that's in the marketplace. So what I wanted to show people was, look, when the crash comes, first of all, a correction comes every year. I don't know if you remember last January, the world was ending. The market lost $2 trillion in January. It was the worst mm. January yes, ever. Yes, I remember, remember that? that. And we yeah. ended the year at a total record-breaking year again. So obviously there are going to be corrections. They happen every year since 1900 the average one is two months long and it costs you 14 percent if you sell but if you don't sell you're fine there's a bear market about every five years we've gone eight years without one that's why i wrote this book because i want to show you how to protect yourself when that bear comes but more importantly how to take advantage of it because it is the greatest opportunity in your life to leapfrog from where you are to where you want to be let me explain why if I told you, if your favorite car was, let's say, young man, what do you like? And you say, I love Ferraris. They're on sale for 50% off. You'd be pretty excited. The stock market's the only place when things go on sale for 50% off where everybody panics. Mm -hmm. See, Warren Buffett looks at it and goes, this is the greatest opportunity of my life. He tells everybody to do this, but everybody else panics. What you need to know is that every bear market that's ever come, they average a year. They usually cost 33%, but if you don't sell, they don't cost you anything. And in two centuries of American history, please hear me if you're listening at home. In two centuries, every single bear market was followed by a bull market. Everybody remembers 2008, oh my God, the market dropped 35, 40, 50% at peak to trough. It went up 69% the next 12 months. What, what happens if you don't have the money to invest in the market? I mean, you got a few bucks, you put it in the bank. You know, how much should you invest in the, in the market? How can you get your foot in the door? Well, all the answers I'm giving you, by the way, are not my answers. I interviewed 50 of the smartest financial people in the world, from Warren Buffett to Ray Dalio to Carl Icahn. But the answer to your question is, you have to become an owner and not just a consumer. If you own an iPhone and you don't own, own Apple, and not just Apple, but American business, you're making a giant mistake. Now, people say, but I have no money. And I think I shared with you when I was on before, there's one of my favorite examples is a man who grew up in the 1950s, worked for you. PS. His name's Theodore Johnson. True story. He never made more than $14,000 a year, but he retired with $70 million and he gave away $35 million while he was still alive. How is that possible? He understood the power of compounding. A friend of his said, I'm going to put a 20% tax on you. And he goes, I can't live on less than $14,000 a year. He said, listen to me. If the government passed another tax of 20% more, you'd scream, you'd yell, you'd complain, and you'd pay it and you adjust to it. He said, this will make you wealthy. So what people have to do is take five or 10 or 15 or 20, you build it through time, and you gotta put it aside and have it automated so you don't see it, it goes into an investment account. Then where to put it, this book shows you by walking through those elements. But what I want people to know is, if you're a millennial and you're full of debt from college and you think you'll never get out, this will show you exactly how to get out, and the best time to get, to get out is when things break down, because that's when the opportunity is going to be there. If you're a baby boomer and you didn't get started until it was too late, it's not too late when the crash comes. That's the ironic piece. Mm -hmm. And here's one more thing. You think about timing. Like right now you're saying, should I get out of the market yeah, or not? Yeah, right. So let me answer that. Charles Schwab and J.P. Morgan did a 20-year study. They said in the last 20 years, the S&P 500, the market, the index, it's gone up 8.2% per year, which means you're doubling your money, you know, like every nine years, you're doing pretty damn well. But here's the challenge. If in 20 years you were out of the market on the 10 best trading days in 20 years, then your, mark, your value went from 8% to 4.5, cut it in half. Wow. If you missed 20 of the best trading days, just one day a year, because you thought, oh, it's too, I want to get out of the market. If you miss those 20 days, 
you make 2%. If you miss the top 30 days in 20 years, one and a half days, you lose money. So keep your, 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 your... The most dangerous thing is not to be in the market. Right. It, keep it and just ride it out. Yes. Right? And it isn't just the market, right? You need a series of investments right. to diversify. Nobody should put all their money in the market. But when you start seeing how this works, like people say, well, what if I go in tomorrow and the market crashes? Well, Schwab did a study. They found, what if you bought on the perfect day of the year when the market crashed and you bought that day, the lowest level? Or what if you bought on the worst day, the peak of the market, and it crashes the next day? What if you, so if you were bought it perfectly, if you bought it the worst, what if you dollar cost average? You just, every month you spend the same amount, whatever stocks are, so it averages the price. Or you go in cash, which is what so many people are doing because they're afraid. Who lost cash by 50%? They had 50% less money. Cash is going nowhere. Who won? Yeah, the person who was there on the ideal day. But the person who got on the worst day after 15 years was only behind $10,000. So the, the, it's hard, it's counterintuitive, but you want to be in the market, and then when the market does crash, instead of selling, which is what people do, you want to stay. My partner in writing this book is Peter Malouk. Peter created a company called Creative Planning. He's been rated the number one financial advisor by Barron's three years in a row. No one's done that in history two years in a row by CNBC, and this year Forbes did their first list, and he's number one on their list. So he's my partner. I'm on his board of directors. So if people go do business with him, they should know that I'm with that organization. I benefit. But I partnered with him because in 2008, he took his clients. He had no advertising. He went from a $500 million business, sounds big, to $2 billion in the middle of the crunch time. And the reason is everybody flooded to him because he told people, here's what will happen when the bear market comes, and we're going to clean up. Here's, he told him in advance, I don't know when it's going to come, but I'll show you what we're going to do. It'll be the best time of your life. Mm. And he delivered. So they all brought him new clients. Now he's $23 billion in assets, wow. right? Just from the kind of impact he's had. So if anybody reads the book and they want coaching beyond what I've done for them in the book, they can go to getasecondopinion.com, getasecondopinion.com, and he'll do a, a breakdown for you like he does for millionaires and billionaires. And by the not. way, Tony, you're giving away all the money from the book. 100% of it is going to Feeding America. We fed 100 million people last year. 100 million the year before. We're going to feed 100 million this year. I'm going to feed a billion people over the next seven years with them. It's when amazing. you think about those numbers and people are still hungry, how is that possible? In this country, 47 million possible? people go to sleep each night not knowing if they're going to have a meal in the morning, and 17 million of them are children and seniors. I was one of them. That's, it's not that I'm such a good guy. It's just I know what it's like to suffer. I don't want anybody else to suffer. And it makes me crazy that we've cut food snaps, the SNAP program, by $7 billion. How, how did you go from basically not having a hot meal to, you know, basically being a, a guru, an international guru, doling out financial advice. Well, it's interesting. I, I was just, uh, <laughs> Worth Magazine just named me their Power 100. It was the 100 most influential people in global finance, <laughs> along with Carl, all the guys I interviewed. But part of it is I believe in modeling. I believe success leaves clues. If someone has done very well financially for decade after decade, they're not lucky. They're doing something different. If someone is fit and healthy and they've managed it for 20 years, they're lucky. they got a great relationship. They're, they're not lucky. So I'm really good at deciphering what those things are. So I would go sit down with someone like Jack Bogle, you know, who built, you you know, three, you know, trillion dollar industry, right? You know, and what he's doing there at Vanguard. And I'm supposed to have a 45 minute interview and we go four hours and he says, he's been in the business 65 years and in the book he says it was the most penetrating, emotional interview he's ever done in his life because I kind of extract it out of their brain and then make it simple so you can apply it. It is yeah. simple, right? It, uh, well, who knows? Well, I mean, it it's simple, simple when you say it. <laughs> yeah. And this is a lot more digestible than the last book, oh, which I appreciate. Book was 670 pages. Right. This so is this 208. Is... You can knock it off in a day. Listen, yeah. I want to ask you, I am curious. I have been for a long time. Donald Trump, you've done a number of public events with Donald Trump over yes, the years, is. seminars, that kind of thing. Where And Mrs. Know. Clinton, both. They're both good friends. And Mrs. Clinton. Yes. Um, and Mr. Clinton. I was just with President Clinton last weekend. Yeah, you consulted George W. Bush, too. Yes. But Donald Trump, I'm, I'm just curious, um, what's your take on that man right now? <laughs> and you know him like few of us do. You, I, gave him, I gave him actually his first big speech. He'd never done a speech more than two or three hundred people. I called him up, I hired him, we're friends. You and, hired him? Yeah, I hired him to come speak. And it was 10,000 people. And he freaked out, like he was backstage, like freaking out. But once he got on stage <laughs> and it went well, he got addicted what, to it. Now we have a president. What year was, was this? Big crowds. 
Oh my gosh, it was probably 15, 18 years ago, something like that. Well, he was yeah. nervous like how? Well, how did that manifest oh, itself? Oh, shit. Well, you know, he didn't like to shake anybody's hands because he's a germphobe, right? In those <laughs> days, he's learned to do that as president. But, you know, he was, he was freaking out. And he was sweaty and like, my God, I thought this was 200 people. You know? <laughs> and he got on stage and his main talk was get a prenup. That was his primary key to success. <laughs> get a prenup. I heard the same thing. He went to give a talk in Sydney, Australia. And yeah. the, the idea was, yeah, I see all these beautiful couples. They come in, they're all happy. Get a prenup. And people paid a lot of money for that little <laughs> seminar. By the way, do you have have you like talked to him? Have you, I haven't like, since he become president. No, no, he's... you know he knows I'm available. He's not really looking for coaching, as you can tell right now. But <laughs> at some point, hopefully, he's. I got to tell you, uh, I, whether you voted for whether you voted for this man or not, he's still our president. I was with President George Bush, George W. Bush, the other day, a couple no, a couple months ago, to be accurate. And I asked him, I said, how do you feel about this? And I always respect him because he never attacked Obama. He obviously doesn't agree with Obama. He said, he's our president. The people spoke. It's his turn. I need to shut up and let him be president. And I said, well, off the record. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, feel, right? yeah, yeah. And he said, well, he said, Tony, you know, I wanted my brother to win, obviously, but he didn't. And he said, but all this talk of the world's over, he said, Here's what I learned by being president. When I when I was a kid, Nixon got kicked out of the office. We all remember being impeached. And I thought that's the end of the American presidency. That's the end of the way our way of life. He's destroyed our reputation. And he said, it's just not true. It didn't happen. He said, you know why? Because the office is bigger than the occupant. Right? He said, this institution is bigger. One guy can screw things up a bit, but we have three branches of government. We already see the balance in the travel ban. Right. And it all comes together. So instead of gloom and doom, why don't we work together and to figure out how to work together? Everybody's got different styles. You don't have to like and agree with everybody to say, I want to do what's right for my kids. I want to do rights for America. Both sides care about America. Both sides want us protected. Both sides want us to be prosperous. They just disagree about the way. And now we demonize. It used to be we fight and then you go have a beer together. Now, if you talk to the other side, you're immoral. <laughs> There's right. something yeah. wrong with you. You're so. deplorable. <laughs> yeah, deplorable. Anyway, you got a chapter in here as well, not just money, but basically the stuff that you're famous for, originally famous for, yes. right? Yeah, well, what that really is is, you know, money doesn't make you happy. You want money because it's resources. It's portable power. You can do things for people when you're not even there, for people who care about your friends, your family, whoever. But money makes you more of what you are. If you're mean, you got more to be mean with. You know, if you're giving, you have more to give with. And so the last chapter of the book is really about how to be rich and happy right now. Because I need to be 50 billionaires. I can tell you point blank, the majority are not people that are euphorically happy every day. They mm. live in stress still because our brains are 2 million years old and our brain's always looking for what's wrong to survive. We don't have a saber-toothed tiger, so we make up what are people thinking, do we have enough money? And it doesn't matter if you have a billion dollars or a hundred dollars, people do that. So the ultimate freedom, the unshakability, is to take control of your own mind. And I show people how to do that One as One well. thing I remember from the personal power program, you know, everybody has problems, but showing up to your problems in a limo is a little bit better <laughs> than walking. I think that was from personal well, that power. Was when I was like 25 years old. So. Yeah, you still apply. Yeah, the yeah, book is there. out now, it's called Unshakeable your financial freedom playbook tony robbins always great to have you on good thank day you. new york thank you, Zen. happy you birthday thanks pal very much <laughs> guys i really appreciate it, greg